What if every item had a number? Now, this is an idea that the game has kind of abandoned since 1.8, but it does have some key advantages. If every item had a number, you could create a new version of that item and have it update for all the players. And if every item had a number, you could also create custom recipes of all kinds without having to do any MBT checks, which would increase the efficiency quite drastically so that it's actually practical to make custom recipes while in the game and update them on the fly. And the item database does just that. It gives a serialized number to every item in the game, both vanilla and custom, and allows you to create new crafting recipes. And these crafting recipes are able to be edited. They're able to be moved into whatever slot makes sense. They're able to be both shapeless and shaped, and they can also be mirrored. And for you vanilla lovers, I have a custom setting that allows you to create all, add all the vanilla recipes to the game. And these also come in mirrored variants, which do not cost a large additional load onto the overall system and works for item tags as well. It also has the mirror. In addition, you can also do shift clicking. So here I can create eight more, which gives me 12. And for you longtime fans of mine, you may be familiar with my favorite kind of adaptation in using an ender crafter, which allows you to craft items in an ender chest, making it more multiplayer friendly in that people won't be able to steal from the items while you're in the UI. And just like that, we also have an ender crafter, which works exactly the same as a regular crafter. Um, and it does not eat up your ender chest items. You maintain the sanctity of the ender chest. In addition to that, there are also brewing stand recipes, smithing table recipes, and not yet implemented smelting recipes. You can also view all the vanilla IDs in case you don't have the setting turned on to automatically apply the IDs to vanilla items. All of this comes bundled in the item database, including a resource pack which contains the resources to make things look a little prettier inside the UIs. And these things, resources can be edited, such as crafting name, so that when you're inside the ender chest, it looks a little different. Or you can edit the crafting UI and change some of the background textures if you want to make it look like a truly custom crafter. As you can also edit the smither UI. And for barrels, you just have to rename the barrel. All of these things that I've discussed will be gone into in detail on how it works, what kind of the benefits and consequences are of using each module, and uh, how you can add it to your world and start working with it yourself in a separate video. So those videos will be linked in the description of this as well as in the help section of the data pack. And you can go there by doing trigger item DB menu and just click help and those videos will be linked here and you can just watch them. But if you have any additional questions, you can join the Discord server and ask away. I know that this is version 1.0 of the pack, so there may be a little bit of bugginess, uh, but the item database is designed to be uh, quite dynamic and maintain its sanctity. So at all times, you can always export your recipes if you're ever worried or copy the data file inside your world save data file, which it will tell you the location when you export your database right here. It's saved under the save data command storage item db buffer dot dat file and that will save a version of all of your recipes as well as all of your items. So if you want to jump into this, I recommend watching those other two videos on what you intend to use and then also downloading the pack in the description and following along. Anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time. Peace.